Hi, this is Dr. A, and we're going to continue with our Basics of the Lab video series. We are still in hematology, and this video is about the WBC, or the white count, as part of a CBC or a CBC with differential. The WBC um, is also known as leukocytes, white blood cells, or WBC. They are nucleated, colorless, polymorphic cells that range in size from 10 to 20 microns. Their name derives from the fact that after a blood sample is centrifuged, the white blood cells are found in the Buffy coat, which is a thin, typically white layer of nucleated cells between the red cells that have settled and the plasma. So you can see it in this design here, and it's right here, this white layer. Um, so the higher the white count is in a patient, the thicker this layer is going to be, the more visible it is. The last span of an average WBC will range from a few days to several years, depending on the type of WBC. So we're going to look at them, but like the neutrophils can be literally just a few hours to a few days, um, whereas the lymphocytes can persist to, for many years. On a CBC report, the normal WBC count is approximately 4 to 11 times 10 to the 9 per liter. Um, these ranges, again, can vary slightly by region and by analyzer. So let's talk about WBC formation and function. The formation of granulocytes are all formed in the bone marrow and released from the bone marrow to enter the circulation. The lymphocytes and the monocytes are formed in the bone marrow, um, and they are released in the circulation, but a lot of lymphocytes and monocytes are actually home to lymphoid tissue, where they spend a great amount of time um, filtering the lymphatic fluid. The function of the white cells are a defense mechanism against microorganisms, foreign bodies, toxins, and can cancerous cells. The uh, granulocytes and the monocytes, what they do as part of this defense mechanism is to engulf and destroy the invading microorganisms in particular ma matter like dust, smoke, etc. And they can also clear the body of any dead or injured tissue cells. The lymphocytes, they inactivate foreign antigens via antibody and uh, via delayed hi type hypersensitivities. So um, the lymphocytes usually have a longer lasting response and those lymphocytes um, exist for longer periods of time in the blood and lymphatic fluid. When you look at the WBC on a CBC, there are several things to uh, think about. So if the WBC is elevated, you can either have leukocytosis or leukemia. So leukocytosis is an abnormal increase in the number of white cells and the cause are going to be uh, acute bacterial infection, severe malaria, uremia, ulcers, it's elevated after hemorrhage, pregnancy, um, postoperatively, um, it's elevated in carcinomas, leukemias, strenuous exercise, and emotional stress and anxiety. Leukemia specifically is a condition that's characterized by the prol proliferation of the leukocytes and their precursors, so the early leukocytes in the tissues of the body. And it's associated with many changes in the circulating cells of the blood, but the leukemia basically is a cancer of the blood cells, whereas leukocytosis is a normal response to infection, especially bacterial infection. Now, you can also, if you see that on the report the WBC is low, then you would have leukopenia. Leukopenia is a decrease in the number of WBCs below the normal levels, and the cause are going to be radiation therapy, chemotherapy. Those are very common causes. Certain drugs, certain viral infections, malaria, pernicious anemia, hepatitis, cirrhosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and lupus. And so this is why uh, ER physicians especially do love to order a CBC on their patients because just with the one test, you can at least um, help determine if um, the infection or what's going on with the patient could be 
a bacterial infection if you have leukocytosis, or maybe a viral infection if you see leukopenia. Now, of course, if the white count is normal, then they you know, need to investigate further, or maybe um, the patient's just not sick enough to have um, to sh show changes in the WBC. There are several types of WBC that are present in the blood. The first category are your granulocytes, um, named granulocytes because they have granules in their cytoplasm. The neutrophils are the most abundant. They're going to be 40 to 60 percent of the white cells in circulation. They are also called the segmented neutrophils, SAGs, or polymorphonuclear cells, PMN cells. Their circulation time is only about six to eight hours, after which they move from the endothelium into the tissue. So they move out of the bloodstream into the tissue, into the body. And unless they engage a foreign body or they are um, sustained by the cytokine milieu, so the, the signaling, cell signaling chemicals, they will undergo programmed cell death, which is apoptosis. Less mature forms of the neutrophils are called bands. And the presence of bands in high numbers are indicative of an acute infection, especially an acute bacterial infection. And this is known as a left shift. Another note I do want to say is um, you can also, in the CBC report, see an absolute neutrophil count. And the way you get the absolute neutrophil count is you get the percentage of neutrophils and times the white count. So let's say if our patient's white count was reading at 10 and they had 60% neutrophils, then the absolute neutrophil count would be six and that's times 10 to the nine per liters. The next granulocyte is the eosinophils. We expect to only see about 5% of the white cells in circulation or less that are eosinophils. They are able to phagocytize, kill, and digest bacteria and yeast. They are present in large numbers in the intestinal mucosa and the lungs, which if you think about it, are two entry points um, where foreign proteins can enter the body. Breathing in, I uh, think breathing in allergens and stuff, and then also ingesting things that you could be allergic to. And um, the presence of high numbers of eosinophils are highly suggestive of parasitic infections, um, and they are also involved in allergic reactions, and especially in immediate hypersensitivities, meaning um, if the person is allergic to something, <clears throat> let's say a bee sting, and they get stung, they react within 30 minutes, and part of that allergic reaction is going to be this activation of the eosinophils. The last granulocyte is the basophil. Uh, you expect about 2% or less of the blood uh, cells, of the white cells in circulation to be basophils. Um, their lifespan is approximately two weeks, which is the longest for any of the granulocytes uh, in the bloodstream. Uh, they may be increased in chronic inflammation and in leukemia, and they are involved in both immediate and delayed hypersensitivity allergic reactions. The delayed hypersensitivity allergic reaction um, is like the poison ivy, poison oak reaction that takes about 48 hours to fully develop. And so um, basophils are involved in that. And so a person that has chronic allergies, you would expect to see a little higher than normal basophils and eosinophils on their CBC. Next, you have your A granulocytes uh, category name because the, they don't contain granules in their cytoplasm. And those you have monocytes and lymphocytes. So the monocytes, you would expect three to nine percent of the white cells in the blood to be monocytes. I, I like to just keep about 10 percent as a number in my brain, but you know something close to that. Again, these can vary slightly from lab to lab. Monocytes will mature into macrophages when they leave the bloodstream. So macrophages are found in tissue, the monocytes are found in the bloodstream. They are present in the lymph nodes, alveoli of the lungs, spleen, liver, and bone marrow. They are a very important component of the immune system. They are involved in both cell-mediated and soluble immune activity against antigens. They um, function often as antigen-presenting cells, and with that they can activate 
lymphocytes, and it can, we're going to talk about it, and it can activate the lymphocytes to produce antibodies and the lymphocytes to do cell to cell in, uh, immunity. Um, and so they're really important. They are kind of a security uh, crew, if you will, um, going all over the body looking for things that are foreign and don't belong. Continued with the egg granulocytes, the lymphocytes. So that's going to be the next most abundant white cell after the neutrophils with uh, 22 to 44% of white cells in circulation being lymphocytes. They give specificity and memory to the body's defense against foreign invaders, and that is why they can persist for years, even decades. There are several categories of lymphocytes. You have your T-cell lymphocytes. They do cell-mediated immunity, meaning they are looking for body cells that are either cancerous or infected with viruses, and then they destroy those cells. So they do cell to cell, so lymphocyte to body cell immunity. They are the predominant leukocyte in circulation and in tissue. So when you see a lymphocyte on the blood smear, it is more likely to be a T cell. Then you have the B cell lymphocytes and they produce antibodies. Antibodies are known as immunoglobulins. And there are five different immunoglobulins or categories of immunoglobulins. Um, immunoglobulins A, D, E, G, and M. And they are abbreviated as IgG and IgM. And IgG and IgM are commonly associated with the development of immunity. IgM um, being the first response antibody, IgG being the more specific antibody that persists for weeks to months and even years. There are also natural killer cells in the lymphocytes. They are derived from the T cell lineage because they do cell to cell immunity. They do cytotoxic effect on those virally infected cells and cancer cells. But the natural killer cells are more part of the innate immunity. They're already programmed to just generally look for virally infected cells and cancer cells, whereas as the, the T cells can be specifically programmed against uh, a specific type of virus. And that wraps up all of our white cells. Thank you for your attention.